Hi everybody and welcome to Tech Tip Tuesdays. Today what we're going to do is we're going to go over a piston issue and it's nothing serious, right? We've got these and it doesn't matter if we're on trumpet or a baritone or euphonium or tuba, it doesn't matter. All of this is going to work exactly the same. It's that trumpet that works well, just not great. You know, like when we're using the pistons, they function, they're just kind of slow and, and they drag on just a little bit. What we want to do is we, we want to get inside of this horn and clean it up. And it's not that difficult to do, especially with some really simple tools. So we're going to show you what those are today, uh, show you how to get this all taken care of and uh, get your instruments playing really, really well. Let's show you. So what we've got is we've got this piston that are, they're working, they're just not great. So what we want to do is we want to start by taking the bottom caps off. Um, I'm working those off here. If they get too, if they get stuck, I've got a video on the YouTube channel that shows how to how to get uh, caps off that are stuck. It's no big deal. Um, so then we take these off here. I'm gonna pull all my pistons out. Lay them off to the side for just a second. And first the thing I'm gonna work on is the casing itself. I wanna have a clean place for these pistons to go back into when we're ready for them. So my favorite tool out there is this tool from Brass Savers. Um, they make this plastic rod for, one for trumpets, one for euphoniums and tubas. And it's simply just the different size brushes for the different size of tubing. I like them because they really do a good job of scrubbing. We've got all of the scrubbing material here where a simple nylon brush, and yeah, but it's got some brushes on it, but it just doesn't grab and really remove any material where these guys do. So I'm gonna take this large size, um, and I've got just two different jars of, of water, just to say, look, you don't have to have a sink. I, this is soapy water and clean, fresh water. So I'm gonna take a little bit of the soapy water, kind of wring this out. And I'm gonna come inside of this casing um, here. I'm just gonna start scrubbing the inside of this out. What I'm going for is I'm trying to get all of that milk and popping cookies and snot and piece of bacteria that we blow into our horns out of the horn. Now that I've got that scrubbed down, I'm gonna I'm going to hold the horn up and look into the, the light or the sunlight or a, the UV lights if I've got them up, up top and I'm looking for any debris that's still left in there. Obviously there's still a bunch of water and moisture inside of there but I'm looking for any gunk. And when I don't see it, I'm gonna to change tools. I'm gonna to go to one of these rods here. It has just a short metal straight rod, uh, usually around the side, and then it has a little um, gap on this side here that we simply stick a clean, lint-free cloth. I prefer microfiber or like these um, nylon silk cloths. I really like them a lot. And we're gonna take that and we're going to just go up inside of the, the casing and start drying these out. If you have compressed air, this is a really good place to use compressed air and just blow your horn dry. But let's face it, in the classroom, most of us don't have that, so these work really well. I'm gonna check it again, make sure I'm perfectly dry. If not, I can always move my rag around a little bit, grab another cleaner spot or more dry spot. And go again. All right, now that, my, now that my trumpet is clean, I'm gonna move on to the pistons. Have you ever noticed the slight foggy, let's bring it that focus, there we go. How there's sometimes this fogginess to the piston. Some parts are really, really shiny, but other parts are foggy. I'm not worried about this section up here at all. It doesn't touch the casing. This is the part that actually works. I wanna polish this up and get this clean. If we've got any buildup on it or anything like that, I wanna get that taken care of as well. But I wanna worry about getting that clean. I also wanna worry about getting the ports clean, so the space in between. Because this is where we're blowing all of our milk and popping cookies and snot and piece of bacteria. 
And it's important to get that stuff out. But what I'm really worried about, I'm really worried about the calcium and lime. It's naturally occurring in our breath. Every single one of us has calcium and lime that we naturally blow into the horn. And that's the part that actually will eat, eat the brass away. Brass doesn't rust, it rots, and it rots from the inside out. And it's, it rots because of that calcium and lime. The food and stuff like that, it doesn't care about that stuff. But the calcium and lime, it cares about that. So we need to worry about getting that stuff out of there. So I'm going to look inside of each one of these uh, pistons and see if there's anything in there. And if there is, I'm going to go back to my brass saver. And I'm going to just come in here and start scrubbing those out, rubbing those down. I always come in from both sides of these portholes because oftentimes they're bent and you can't get straight through them. So you're going to do this six times. Just to really make sure that those are clean and do that on all of your pistons. I've got a really sticky spot here, so I'm going to take just this needle spring. I'm real careful. I'm going to come in here and just lift that material off of there. There we go. And same thing. I'm going to take my cloth. I'm going to dry these pistons off. And now I'm going to use this stuff. Let's get this clean one here. I'm going to use Miracle Cloth. Now you guys, when you buy a package of, of Miracle Cloth, it looks like it's from the 1950s. It has the same imagery and picture that it has had for decades. And who cares? It works fantastic. It really lives up to the name of Miracle Cloth. It actually has a uses coconut oil as a carrier um, and has a really mild abrasive in it that helps us kind of clean some stuff up. And they work great. So what we do is we take our piston, kind of roll the cloth over a little bit, and I'm just going to start scrubbing this piston down. In the shop, to speed this up, I actually take the finger button off and, and top cap off and chuck it into my bench motor. But I'm guessing most people don't have a bench motor in their band room. So we're really going to just lay in there and polish some of these spots up. And this horn has a few spots here, but it's where the plating is actually starting to disappear because it's an older horn. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to just rub off and polish off some of that buildup. And it's just, it's normally not dirt, it's just, um, well, frankly, it's kind of like electroplaning. It's like building more material upon it. Just makes them a little bit larger, a little bit more slow. But that stuff can be rubbed off. And you see how our cloth is starting to turn black? That's okay. That is the, um, that's the chemical reaction going on on the, on the polishing. That's what we're going for. Now these are pistons, quite shiny actually. Then again, I'm going to go back to my clean cloth. Start rubbing these down. I'm going to get all of that coconut oil off of the horn. And then where I've got some additional that coconut oil builds up and it builds up inside of the spots here or inside the tone holes. Uh, what am I looking for? The word ports builds up in the ports. So I'm just going to come back in here and real quick wipe those things out. Some people ask, well, why don't you do that? This step after I've polished the outside of the horn. Oh, cause I'm a bit of a nerd to be honest with you. And I want to make sure I'm seeing everything right the first time of getting all the dirt out. This is just oil buildup. This is no big deal. And then one last time, I'm going to clean these guys off.
Okay, now my pistons are ready to go. I'm going to turn my attention to my bottom caps. And if my bottom caps have any stuff in them, which normally they do, I can use a needle spring or a pencil or a screwdriver tip and come in here and kind of break um, any of that calcium and lime buildup. That's usually what we see down in here. Sometimes you see pizza, but normally it's calcium and lime. Then we're going to take just an old toothbrush and get in there and, and brush that stuff out of there, making sure our bottom caps are as clean as possible. They don't have to be sparkling. We're just trying to do some regular maintenance on these horns. Now I've got my top caps, my casings, or my pistons, and my casings all cleaned up. Now we're ready to start putting this thing back together. What I want to do is the piston, the top cap, and the bottom cap have threads, and I want to lubricate those threads. Have you ever found uh, where you're trying to unscrew a piston and this thing simply won't come loose, or the bottom cap won't come off? It's because we never removed it, never cleaned that stuff out of there, and never lubricated it. So I like to use uh, just a key oil, but if you don't have a key oil, your tuning slide grease will work just fine. So if you take just a really small smear of tuning slide grease, just rub it in there, that also works just fine. Then we take a, a really decent oil. Um, if you don't know, I own a company called Tech Oil Lubricants. We do um, valve oil and very soon my tuning slide grease is coming out. And call me biased, but I think it's one of the best lubricants on the market. It's not the end-all be-all. It does not fit every application. It fits most applications, but some instruments that are brand new, it may be the wrong oil for it. But for any instrument that's certainly over a year old, I think Tech Oil starts coming in and being a fantastic option for you. And a lot of the reason being your students will oil your inst the instrument once and not have to re-oil the pistons for at least in a month. And that's high-end pro players are finding this. They oil once, they never oil again for several months. And usually what happens is players use way too much oil. Don't get me wrong, I'm happy to sell you oil, but we use way too much oil. What we're trying to do is we've got the casing, right? We've got that casing that this piston's going up and down in, and then the piston itself. And the amount of space between the casing and the piston is thousands of an inch, right? Very, very small. One drop of oil will fill a very large portion of that. And so we, what we want to do is we only want to use two drops. So I come in here and I go one drop, two drop, that's it. Take this back down the side, spin it around, make sure that that valve guy catches. And if we're lucky, there we go. Screw it all back down. And now that piston's already moving so much more freely. One, two, put in the appropriate piston. Oh, this feels so much better. And we do the same thing down here on our bottom. I'm going to come in and oil these. When I'm using my key oil, I use, I use a liberal amount. Don't be afraid of putting it on there. Try not to cross thread them. If they start to cross thread, set the cap on there, back it up, go the wrong way, go lefty loosey, and until it clicks, listen to it. See how it's crooked right now? Find the right spot for it. There it is. Back it up till it clicks and it bounces out, and then you've got your casings on. And everything functions really nice and clean. It sounds really good. 
The last thing I want to talk about today is ticking pistons. Have you ever heard? These two are working great, but that's awful. It's almost always because something's loose. So on this one here is just a valve, the top cap. If I tighten that top cap back down, nothing's there. If I give it just an eighth of a turn, sounds awful. So anytime you hear that sound, have your players just tighten down their, um, usually the top caps, sometimes it's the finger buttons, sometimes it's the bottom caps, but most of the time it's that top cap because they just re-oiled their piston and as they're trying to put it back together, they just didn't tighten all the way down. You guys, that's all there is, all there is to it. And this works on trumpets, trumpo, or trumpets euphoniums, baritones, and tubas, any piston instrument out there, this will work just great. And this isn't rocket science. This is really easy stuff to just get in there and do regular maintenance and cleanings on your horn. In the classroom, I recommend doing this twice a year. Uh, I recommend doing this at Christmas break so that your students have been playing all that first semester and they've got done with that first Christmas concert. And what do we do with that classroom time between that concert and Christmas break? This sort of stuff, clean the horns up. The second time I recommend doing it is right at the end of the school year. Get those horns cleaned up before we put them away for the summer and let them you know, just corrode shut. Um, if you used a valve oil like tech oil, it'll actually stay on the piston and lubricate the pistons all summer long. Have you ever got your instruments back from the shop and your pistons are just frozen? You have to actually pop them to get them to loose, to go again. That's one of the, that's one of the first things I figured out about tech oil and why I started looking at it as repair tech before I ever bought the company. Phenomenal stuff that way. So this is something that's really easy to do. And I recommend again, doing it twice a year. You guys, feel free to come and join me every single Tuesday uh, for another session. The first and third Tuesday of every month is a band topic. The second and fourth uh, Tuesday of every month is an orchestra topic. And when there's a fifth Tuesday, we cover guitars on that. That's every, tech, that's every Tuesday. Uh, join us at 11.15 Mountain Standard Time for Tech Tip Tuesdays. There's a link in the bio for uh, the way to get the link to the live session. That way you can come ask me any questions you've got uh, and we'll go from there. Guys, I'll see you next Tuesday.